I was trapped in a really high rise building 25 stories up uh, for about five hours. It's just a nice little comfortable space to be able to hang out, literally hang out in the bus. So I always say just do it. So that is the exact advice that I got. I really like living in them, uh, but building them is, is pretty cool too. Hi, my name's Andy, and this is the bus I built last year. Come and check it out. Welcome inside my bus. We'll, uh, we'll start here in the kitchen, and I can tell you about why I built it the way I built it. So for me, it was really important to have a really great little cooking space. I have a four burner stovetop under here. So pretty much everything you'd need to cook, same as a house really, it all runs off gas, LPG, or propane in America. And then I have a grill and a full oven under here as well. Above the stove top here, I've got a fully functional extraction fan to take all of the smells out of the bus. I think it's really important inside a small space when you're cooking to be able to take all of those smells outside the bus, otherwise it gets really stinky and gross. Just down here, I've got my buttons to turn on my water pump to get my water going, as well as my hot water cylinder, which runs off propane. I have not a massive sink. A lot of people in their buses like to have these huge ones. I prefer to have a small one because you don't use as much water up with a small sink and it does everything I need it to do. A nice big tap here, which actually, when I open up this window, goes outside and I can put a shower attachment on it and have a nice little outdoor shower if I want to. Hot and cold water as well. A really cool feature of the bus, and particularly in the kitchen itself here, is that these windows actually slide open really far. I mean, it just lets nice airflow into the bus. And on this side, I've got fly screens on it as well, so I can have it open when I'm cooking and not have flies and bugs and mosquitoes come into the bus. My favorite part of the kitchen is probably just the aesthetic look of it, to be honest, with the bamboo bench top. This is actually my second bench top. I built the first one out of a really dark wood and I didn't like it. So I actually went away, bought this one and put this one on. And so it looks much nicer, nice and light. And it goes really well with my sort of olive colored green. Lots of storage is the key. So starting down here, I've got four drawers for all of my cutlery, crockery, pots and pans and bits and pieces in here as well. Um, they slide out really far too, which is cool. So for when I'm traveling, I have these little bungees that I bought. These are actually called shock cords and they're built for yachts actually to keep things secure when you're on the ocean. So I just slide them over there and then they can't really open when you're driving along. Nice big cupboard underneath the sink here, which I keep my rubbish bin and my dishwashing bits and pieces in here as well. I've got lots of cupboard that I lock and they all open up for extra storage up here as well. So moving across to the other side from where the kitchen is, is my dinette seating area. So it's set up really for two people and I do have a little stool that I can put down the end here for a third person because I do have two kids so uh, the three of us sit here quite uh, quite comfortably. This is actually a, a tabletop that I took out of my house. So I bought this for $20 off Facebook Marketplace many years ago. I sanded it all back and, uh, and oiled it down and then I thought it was the perfect size to come in here. I actually cut it in half and then mounted it in here and it, it works out perfectly with the, the curved edges for getting in and out of here, which is um, ideal. Underneath each seat, there is a lot of storage under here. So if I just take the cushions off, I've got a nice big storage space underneath. So again, I've got more opening windows here, which make it nice and breezy when you're sitting here uh, having your dinner. I've got a lot of overhead storage up here, which gives me heaps of space for just random bits and pieces that I keep in these little baskets, which are, uh, Super handy. So I've mounted LED lighting uh, throughout the bus and these are really handy because you can turn them on and it gives a blue light so at night time it's not too bright and then you can turn it on full. They also dim by holding it in there, really handy. So in the bus I've actually mounted a couple of pictures here as well. This is uh, from my first bus, I've, this is the second one I've built now. This is a photo I took uh, of the bus at a beautiful beachside campground and it's got a saying that I sort of came up with many years ago which is Everybody has this fear of dying, and I think it's not really a fear of dying, it's a fear of not having lived your life. Yeah, it's a bit of a quote that I try and live by. Thought I'd mount it in the bus to keep me, uh, keep me focused on living my life. So moving back in the bus, we have our little pantry area and the fridge. So the fridge itself here is not actually an RV fridge. This is a, just a residential fridge. It's a Samsung digital inverter fridge, which are super, economical uh, with power consumption. I've used one similar in my last bus and you know it runs off 
very little amp hours a day uh, and I've never ever had a problem with battery storage or power use in these uh, and it's just so nice to have a full-size fridge and freezer. The pantry I have probably again a lot of storage probably more than I actually need as a single dad uh, <laughs> he's not great at cooking but I have these little bungee cords on here to stop them from sliding out and yeah it's just a really great way to store stuff without having to reach back in I can just slide them straight out. Above I've got a shelf up here where I keep um, just some you know containers and bits and pieces and some washing powder and again just another storage space up here for any stuff I kind of use on a regular basis. My name's Andy and this is my bus. It is an 11 metre long X school bus that used to have 50 passenger seats in here and it is a 1994 Hino and it's a great little bus. So what made me decide to live in a school bus is actually quite a long story which I'll try and cut down to short but uh, in 2011 here in Christchurch actually was quite a large earthquake uh, that destroyed a lot of the city and killed about 181 people. Uh, I was trapped in a really high rise building 25 stories up uh, for about five hours and it was on a lean, all the fire stairs collapsed, we couldn't get out and uh, basically waiting to die uh, in the aftershocks. And that really opened my eyes up to what life was all about. And I realized it wasn't about sitting in an office, um, earning money to pay rent. So I thought about life quite differently and how I could do it and uh, did a lot of research, watched a lot of YouTube channels about people living life differently and came up with the idea of building a bus and traveling around New Zealand and yeah, living my life. Down at the very front of the bus now, and this is my living area. Um, so if we start over here, I've got an eight kilowatt Roaring Meg fireplace, which keeps the bus really nice and toasty. I can also cook on top of this with a pot or a frying pan. I've got a lot of wood storage here as well. So I like to be able to keep it stocked up. This actually opens up too, so I can access it through here. The reason I go with the wood stoves is that you can actually access so much wood and bits and pieces for free around New Zealand if you've got the time to go out and find it and that means it's just a lot cheaper and easier to run and keep off grid. I think the downside is that it's a little bit messier with wood and stuff in the bus but it's just a lot easier than sort of burning um, diesel fuel all the time. Underneath this is the wheel arch uh, for the front wheels so I kind of had to build it up on top of that and just get a bit creative again. Uh, this is a cool little feature so actually up in this space was a big air conditioning unit for when the bus was a, uh, a school bus. It was not functional when I bought the, the bus so we pulled it out it was about 200 kgs it was ridiculous um, but we managed to get it out which gave me this nice big raised space here I and mean, it also left in these big brackets. So I actually have a hammock chair that I sit in here and um, sit beside the fire. It's just a nice little comfortable space to be able to hang out, literally hang out in the bus. Yeah, and it's also got a skylight right above it so you can sort of sit here and actually look out at the, look out at the stars and stuff at night time, which is pretty cool. So across this side is my, my couch area. Now this doubles as about three different things. One is that it's an extra bed. Um, it's actually quite wide. So I can throw an extra kid on or someone that's coming to stay can sleep on this. Uh, it's got three seat belts built into it. So there's three lap belts. So when the kids are with me or when people are with me, they can sit here and, and be safely buckled in. And it's also got storage. So these lift up um, under here as well. So storage that end and that end. And again, I've got the wheel arch under it. So um, it kind of covers that over. Throughout the bus, I have got roller blinds all the way through, um, other than the front and the back, which have curtains. but they're just pretty basic model blinds that I bought and cut down to size myself. The blinds hang out a little bit. So I bought these little clips and I clip them in. Yeah, it makes it a nice little warm and super private space. So if you are parked in places that, you know, sides of streets and bits and pieces where you perhaps, you know, don't want to show everyone that you're living in here, you can keep it nice and private. In terms of cost, I bought the bus uh, for $10,000 New Zealand and then I spent around $40,000 uh, on all the materials to build it. I did everything myself basically except for uh, installing the seat belts which has to be done by a certified engineer. Otherwise I did all the work myself so 
yeah, around 50,000 New Zealand dollars for the full, full build. The bus is 11 metres long by around 2.5 metres wide, so that gives me plenty of space to live in here. So in terms of living tiny, I've already lived in another bus that I built, the first bus, for about two years. Uh, I lived in this one now for coming up on one year. And I don't have any plans to change that way anytime soon. You know, I never say never and just keep life pretty fluid. So I may end up uh, selling this one, building another one. I really enjoy the process of building them. I really like living in them, uh, but building them is, is pretty cool too. As we continue further back into the bus, we reach the bedroom area. So on the right hand side over here, we have my kids' bunks. So I've got obviously two of these in here. Again, they have opening windows uh, to get some nice uh, fresh air through during the night with fly screens on it. And also they both got a working little reading light in here as well. Both the kids really, really love their space. It's super cozy and cute. And um, yeah, they sleep really, really well in here. And these are actually, I think they're called beddies or, or glamping. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but they just basically zip down and they get in, they're kind of like a sleeping bag, but they're actual sheets and duvets. So yeah, really comfy and cozy for them. Opposite the kids' bunks, we come across and we have our bathroom. So uh, I wanted to have a good size shower. I exercise a lot and I want to be able to use a shower as often as I possibly can. So nice big full size shower in here with a um, detachable shower head. Again, I have Hot water, there's never ever a problem with hot water in this bus too. I've got a, I think 15 litre continuous hot water system. So yeah, it's fantastic actually. I have 250 litres of uh, water storage, which is back in the, in the back end of the bus and the same in my gray tank. So I can shower basically every day for about sort of 10 days, which is, yeah, it's fantastic really. So opposite the shower, I had to get a little bit creative with my build here because again, there's a wheel arch sitting right here. So I actually sort of built a little platform here for my toilet. This is an Ogo composting toilet, which is quite new to the market, I believe. It's a pretty cool little unit. Yeah, nice and easy. It's all automated as well. So with like the nature's head, which I've had in the past, you have to crank the handle yourself. Whereas this one, just a little button on the side and actually automatically turns the composting material in the back and it lights up when the liquids container gets full. So it's actually a, um, a pretty cool design, kind of high tech in terms of composting toilets. It's a, uh, it's a perfect little space, not too bad for uh, getting up on the throne and the kids, the kids can use it as well quite easily. So yeah. So just back from my bathroom is my wardrobe space. It's also my utility cupboards. So my batteries, I've got four 120 amp hour lithium batteries and I actually have them set up in a 24 volt system. So that gives me 240 amp hours at 24 volt. I also have four 200 watt uh, solar panels on the roof. Um, so that gives me 400 watts at 24 volt and that's heaps. I've never ever ever have a problem with my with my power storage. I've got a nice big Victron Energy Easy Solar three-in-one system here. So I have my uh, solar charge controller, a uh, inverter, as well as a battery charger. So when I'm plugged into shore power, it will charge my batteries up, which I've actually never ever done because I've just never needed to. So right in the very back of the bus here is the master bedroom. So this is a full-size queen bed and have a really comfortable kind of latex mattress under here as well. So I sleep like a baby in here. I've got both sides opening windows with fly screens so I can have the breeze flowing through, which is wonderful. I've kept all of the windows from the bus pretty much intact, so it gives me heaps of light. It's really nice sitting back in here uh, when I can park up in a good spot and check out the views. Up around the sides here, again, I've got the overhead storage, which I can keep more clothes and just general, you know, bits and pieces and books and stuff like that up there. The bed itself actually lifts up, and underneath this is where I've got my big 250 litre water tank and also a ton of storage for sporting equipment, tents, fishing rods, all my stuff I like to do when I'm out and about uh, around New Zealand. So definitely my favourite part about the bedroom is using it basically as a lounge and um, hence why I've got all of these cushions up the back here. It's really nice just to sit up here, chill out, look at the view. Uh, we also set up the laptop and a big speaker in here and have home movie nights with the kids sometimes as well. So it's just a really nice comfortable space to hang out.
A lot of people ask me about living tiny and should they do it and, and you know, they have a lot of questions and I always say just do it. It's the, that is the exact advice that I got uh, when I went and looked at someone else's bus. Uh, they just said do it, do it now, do your travelling now and get it out of your system. So absolutely do it. In terms of making money on the road, um, I've tried and done a number of things. Uh, I have a YouTube channel that I did pretty much full time for nearly three years, but mainly what I do for my income is I have a business, which is a commercial cleaning business, where I have staff out and about cleaning offices. And they do a lot of work for builders. After they build houses, we go in and clean, clean the houses. Um, so I do most of that remotely uh, with staff cleaning, but I do get my hands dirty every now and then on big jobs. Um, so I float around doing that. I also used to run hotels and resorts before I started living the bus life. So um, a little side hustle I have is to manage people's Airbnbs, which is done very much remotely too. So I can just sit on my laptop and set prices and deal with guests and you know send the cleaners in when I need to. So that's a good little way of doing things too. If you want to follow my journey in the bus in terms of building and living, uh, you can follow me on YouTube just by searching Bus Life NZ, uh, Instagram and Facebook under the same name, Bus Life NZ. So that's it. Thanks so much for coming and having a look through my little tiny home and we'll see you out on the road. Cheers.